Welcome to Sewing 101 with Blueprint DIY, a fun and interactive approach to learning the basics of sewing. I'm your host, Angelina, and I love to take old clothes to make new clothes, but more about that later. Today, you're gonna learn the parts of a sewing machine. I'm gonna highlight a part of the sewing machine, and I'm gonna see if you can guess what it is, and then we'll all learn together. Each right answer earns you 100 points. And don't be intimidated because most people who have been sewing for a long time still call most of these pieces thingies and whatchamajiggers. All right, let's begin. All right, number one this piece causes the machine to come on. What is it? I know you know what it is. In three, two, one, it's the power switch. Most sewing machines have a power switch, but not all. This mini sewing machine, if you just plug it up, the power comes on. But most full-size sewing machines on the right-hand side, you'll see a power switch, and that allows you to keep your sewing machine plugged up and then just turn it on and off when you wanna operate it. Number two, the round wheel located at the upper right of the sewing machine to manually advance the stitch. You know what this is in three, two, one. It's the balance wheel. It's this thing on the right side of the sewing machine and it moves the needle up and down. You'll use it a lot if you just wanna do one more stitch or if your thread gets caught in the fabric and you need to get it out because you move it up in order to freely pull the thread through the machine. If you're doing more than once, you wanna move it forward, but if you just have to go a half a turn, you can go backwards. Number three. This piece is used to hold and wind an empty bobbin. Can you guess what it is? In three, two, one. It's a bobbin winder pin. It's this piece right here. And if your sewing machine doesn't have it, you probably have like a really small mini sewing machine, but most sewing machines do have it. And it is a godsend because this piece allows you to be able, when you run out of thread on your bobbin, to be able to put more thread on your bobbin. It's a bobbin winder. You can get them separate, a separate bobbin winder, but having them on your machine is just the absolute best. Number four, this piece stops the bobbin winding when the bobbin reaches its optimum capacity. All right, can you guess it? In three, two, one. It's the bobbin winder stop, and it's the piece right next to the bobbin winder pin. Um, and this allows the sewing machine to know when the bobbin has gotten full and to stop winding the bobbin. Normally, sometimes it'll start to go slow. Some machines will stop it completely, uh, depending on the sewing machine, but that's how you know it's full. And it makes your machine much more intuitive. You don't have to think so much. All right, number five. This piece is used to hold the spool of thread. Three two, one. This is the spool pin. It's right here. Um, and actually some machines have two of them. This Janome has two spool pins that pop up when you need them. So if you only need one, you only pop up one. Or if you're doing a twin needle, then you can use both of them. And that's where you put your thread when you are threading your sewing machine. All right, number six. This piece is designed to keep the thread spool on the machine as you sew. All right, let's guess. In three, two, one. This is the spool pin cap, and it goes on top of the spool pin, and it's used to keep your thread from catching on the spool. There's a little notch on the spool that holds the thread, and sometimes if you don't have a cap or the right cap, then the thread will get caught. So you want to make sure you use a spool pin cap that's bigger than the spool of your thread. Number seven. This small metal disc helps to keep the thread taut as you wind a bobbin. All right, let's guess what it is in three, two, one. It's the bobbin winder tension disc. And it's this little piece right here, this little circle piece. It's different on different machines as everything, but it's typically a little circle and it provides tension as you take the thread around to go to the bobbin. And it keeps it taut, keeps it tight, so it's completely stretched out. And because if it's not, then it might get caught on something on the way to the bobbin. So you wanna keep that nice and stretched and that's what that piece does. Number eight a device with a loop or an eye for guiding the thread when it is necessary to change the direction at any point between the spool and the eye of the needle. All right, do you know what it is? In three, two, one. It's the thread guide. On some sewing machines, it's combined with the tension disc, like this mini sewing machine. Here, you can see it right here. Sometimes it's a little loop and sometimes it's a hook, but it's anywhere on your sewing machine just to provide a way so that the thread can change direction. Number nine. This piece puts varying amounts of tension or string on the threads they control to form a strong balanced stitch. Can you guess what it is? 
in three, two, one. It's the tension control. It's this little piece right here. They're exactly the same on these two sewing machines. And sometimes it's different on a computerized sewing machine, but its job is just to hold that thread either tighter or looser depending on what type of fabric you're sewing so if you are sewing through thick layers then you might need your tension to be a little bit looser if you are sewing through thin fabric you might want your tension to be tighter if you're sewing through delicate fabric you might need it to just be a little bit looser and if you are sewing a gathering stitch you might want it to be all the way loose so that you can gather that fabric Typically, your tension when you're sewing just regular garments will be in between three and five. All right, number 10. This pulls the thread off the spool and helps apply an even feed of thread to your needle. All right, let's find out what it is in three, two, one. It's the take up lever and it's this little piece right here. It's kind of like a thread guide because it changes the direction of the thread, but it also moves the thread up and down with the needle so that that thread can stay taut and so that you can get nice control balance stitches every single time. When you've gotten to the end of a stitch and you're taking that fabric out, the take up lever typically needs to be all the way up and then you can pull your thread freely through the machine. If the take up lever, or sometimes I've heard it called an uptake lever, if it's not all the way up it'll be really hard to pull that thread through so you want to make sure that that's all the way up and you use your hand wheel in order to do that. and if you haven't subscribed what are you waiting for like i said i love to upcycle which is perfect for beginners because you're just turning old clothes into new clothes and most of the hard stuff is done for you so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it and i also have opportunities to join my support group or one-on-one -on -one classes by becoming a member of my channel so definitely hit that join button to learn more about Back. All right, number 11. This holds the sewing machine needle in place. Let's find out what it is in three, two, one. It is the needle clamp. It sits right here on the side of the needle and it typically turns with a screwdriver. Sometimes you can get it with your hand, but you want that to be as tight as possible in order to hold your needle in place so that it doesn't come flying out when you're sewing. So most sewing machines, when you first buy them, they come with a special screwdriver that will allow you to turn that and loosen it when you want to change your needle. All right, number 12 a specialized needle for use in a sewing machine. Of course you know what this is. In three, two, one, it's the sewing machine needle. Not to be confused with a hand sewing needle. For a sewing machine needle, the eye of the needle is right at the point and on the opposite end of the shaft. For a hand sewing needle, the eye of the needle is on the opposite side from the point. And so these go into the machine and they allow your thread to go through your fabric. All right, next one, number 13. An attachment used with sewing machines to hold fabric flat as it is fed through the sewing machine and stitched. Do you know what this piece is called? Three, two, one. It's the presser foot. The presser foot is right here underneath the needle. You can get a ton of different presser foots for different things, different applications, depending on what you're trying to do. There's a zipper foot, there's a button foot, there's a buttonhole foot. Some of the main ones do come with your sewing machine, but you can also purchase a ton of other ones. One of the main ones that I am really interested for beginners right now is the Teflon foot. And it looks just like a regular presser foot. However, it is plastic. And the reason it's plastic is because when you're sewing over tacky material like leather, then it's more smooth and it'll glide over it rather than holding to it. So having a good metal foot as well as a Teflon foot, I think is great for when you're first learning to sew. All right, number 14, the little teeth on your sewing machine that feed your fabric evenly through the machine. Do you know what these are called? I didn't know what these were called for a super long time. Three, two, one. They're called feed dogs. Yes, that like makes no sense to me, but they're just like these little razor tooth, sawtooth things that sit underneath the pressure foot and they move up and down as you're sewing. And it's like they're taking the fabric through the machine as you go. Now, if you are into quilting, then you're going to need a machine that allows those feed dogs to drop because when you're quilting, you wanna be able to freely move the fabric. But if you are into just garment sewing, you wanna just go straight through and you want something to control that fabric so it's not wobbling in there, then you'll need the feed dogs. Up. 
All right, number 15. This piece places pressure on the feed dog so that the fabric placed between the feed dog and the presser foot does not shift. Do you know what this piece is called? Three, two, one. It's the presser lever or presser bar. Some different manufacturers call it something different, but all it is is this little piece right on the side that allows you to put your foot up and down. And when it's down, it keeps that fabric, like I said, between the presser foot and the feed dog so that you get good control as you're sewing. Now, some sewing machines nowadays have what they call an extra lift. And so you can lift that presser lever up just to get your normal layers of fabric under. But if you are using several layers, like thick layers, then you can also have an extra lift where it goes up an extra height. I think this one does it too. Put it up and then you have an extra amount that you can take it up. You'll see this a lot on newer release machines as well as on most heavy duty machines. All right, let's go to number 16. A metal plate that sits below the presser foot with a small opening that allows the bobbin thread to come out and the needle to pass through to make stitches. Do you know what this is? In three, two, one. It is the needle plate. And it's this little piece. On this machine, it's very, very small. On a lot of machines, it's much bigger. This is a standard one here. And on most machines, typically when you receive it, it'll have a notch. And that allows the needle to go through. And it also allows you to be able to use a twin needle, which is two needles that work together to go through to make a different kind of stitch. So you definitely want that type of plate. There is a single hole plate that you can get for your sewing machine. If you are sewing something like knit or silk something that's very delicate and likes to get stuck down in the sewing machine which i've definitely had happen um so that plate allows you to sew without having to worry that your fabric is going to get stuck and sucked down in the sewing machine all right now number 17 holds the bobbin in the sewing machine so that the machine stitches can be formed do you know what this is in three two one it's the bobbin case. And I'm gonna show you two different types of bobbin cases. Most modern sewing machines have a clear bobbin case where you just put the bobbin down flat into it. And the reason they do this is because it allows you to be able to see how much bobbin thread you have left. Because one of the most unnerving things uh, when you're sewing is to run out of bobbin thread when you're like this much away from ending your stitch and you have to wind a new bobbin it's just it'll make you crazy so that's what a lot of new sewing machines do however this janome has a more traditional bobbin case style and it is a metal piece that comes out and slides in with the bobbin and holds the bobbin in the machine and it's underneath and they still use that style because they feel like it keeps the machine well balanced over time all right number 18 this allows you to switch between stitch styles And it is in three, two, one, the stitch selector. And on this machine, you just have one dial. If it is a computerized sewing machine, the whole thing will be completely computerized or you'll click a button. But this one has one dial, you pick a stitch and it has all the settings in one dial. This one here has a stitch selector dial and it'll show you on the top of the sewing machine or sometimes it'll be on the side or inside the front panel. You can flip out and see what stitches you have available to you. Sometimes they're on the side of the sewing machine and turn that dial in order to select the stitch that you would like to use. All right, number 19. Indicates the length of a single stitch in millimeters. Of course you know what this is in three, two, one. This is the stitch length selector. And like I said, sometimes it's a button on a computerized machine, on a mechanical machine, it's normally a dial. And it is this one right here. It clearly says length. And this lets you know in millimeters how long you want each individual stitch to be. How far do you want the needle to come forward between each stitch? On this particular machine, you can also choose the stitch width on a separate dial. And this is for when you want to do a zigzag stitch. You would select the zigzag stitch on your stitch selector and then you would pick how wide you want that needle to jump each side between the stitches. All right, number 20 is one of my favorites. The button that allows your sewing machine to sew backwards. 
You know what this is. And three, two, one. It's the reverse stitch lever. I love that most, even many sewing machines come with these nowadays. And it is this little button right here. If you're actively sewing and you press this, your sewing machine will start to sew backwards. And you might be wondering like, why would you need to sew backwards? When you're sewing at the beginning of a stitch and at the end of a stitch, typically if you want to lock that stitch so that when you open up your seam, it doesn't start to come apart, you would do a back stitch, what we call a back stitch at the beginning and end of every stitch. And lastly, number 21. This piece tells your sewing machine when to go and when to stop. And of course, this is absolutely necessary in three, two, one. It is the foot pedal. This piece sits on the floor and you press it with your foot. When you press it down, it makes the sewing machine go. And when you lift your foot, it makes the sewing machine stop. And you can also apply a varying amount of pressure to regulate the speed that you want to sew. And some sewing machines do also come with a feature where you can press a button to make it start and stop if you don't want to use your feet. All right, so how many did you get right? I know a lot of you sewers did not know the technical names of this, but in the end, it's all about whether you know how to use it, right? <laughs> but now that we gotten all of this technical stuff out of the way, I'm super excited for next time because we are gonna get those sewing machines set up and start sewing fast. And it's not nearly as hard as you think. So make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a thing. And if you missed any of the other videos in this series, click here. And I also have a ton of beginner level sewing projects for you right here. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.